you were asked about market position in particular. I believe Microsoft's strong market position where they beat everyone else is related to that compliance, organizational management, like having everything all bundled into one big thing mm -hmm. that you can use and manage at the organizational level. That's the reason why people buy Microsoft tools and by doing what they do with a lot of these features, they make it more difficult. They're, they're giving away their, their, you know, people who are on the IT side will just get frustrated and people on the individual side that are just trying to use the tools go, but it's still not as good as Slack. So mm -hmm. well, I just still want to just use Slack. It's like a lose-lose situation. Why do it to yourself? Yeah. Um, we're not going to stay fully negative during this podcast, though. We are going to get to some proposed solutions. Um, but let's first talk about what this structure and this design, um, what impact this makes then on Microsoft's market position. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what are your thoughts, Matt? Off the top? So Microsoft's market position, in my opinion, one of the strongest, like we've used Slack, we've used other tools, Whimsical, these other things. They have individual, an individual focus by default, and they have it in spades. They started as a scrappy startup, and they were selling to individual people, maybe a small group of people. That's what their that's what their business is, right? When Microsoft tries to compete on those types of features, they will fail. They'll fail because they have invested entirely, like significantly over, pretty much as long as they've existed on more organizational level ex uh, experiences and yep. enterprise functionality, mm -hmm. right? If they really want to compete, they have to throw away some of those old features or they have to completely redesign them completely to actually compete with those individual users, those individual tools, right? Like Slack. Like, like Slack. Yeah, like Monday.com. And, and yeah. I'm saying Slack, Slack now has enterprise features, right? Like they've mm -hmm. they've caught up in some ways in what they can do today. But when they launched, they were they're they're gonna beat you and because they don't have this baggage that you have naturally, right? And you can't really get rid of that baggage. Because you you have such a customer base that's using it, number one. And number two, the there's a reason you're a market leader in that space. There's a reason that you have those features. Those features are important to businesses across the board, big, small, et cetera. Your problem is you're trying to play to both of those worlds when you do this. Like it feels like you're saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch these things to individuals because I know I still got these people in compliance and they're gonna still do it, right? Like they're still gonna, they're, they're gonna eventually, or they're always gonna come to us no matter what, because we've got that such a big deal, but I wanna get this other market. I would encourage Microsoft to say, stop doing that. You need to focus on playing to your strength and really making that experience so great that those individual people don't care about it. Like they want to do this stuff this other way, right? They want to use these organizational level features and and tools because they're just as easy as the other ones. So why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't you put all this information in one spot if it was just as easy as you doing it the other way? Mm -hmm. So like you were asked about market position in particular. I believe Microsoft's strong market position where they beat everyone else is related to that compliance, organizational management, like having everything all bundled into one big thing mm -hmm. that you can use and manage at the organizational level. That's the reason why people buy Microsoft tools. And by doing what they do with a lot of these features, they make it more difficult. They're they're giving away their, their you know, people who are on the IT side will just get frustrated. And people on the individual side that are just trying to use the tools go, but it's still not as good as Slack. So mm -hmm. well, I just still want to just use Slack. It's like a lose-lose situation. Why do it to yourself? When you said storage, yeah, I immediately, like there's a, a flag that goes off in my head of, oh no, IT compliance. Like, yeah. I don't care. Like, yeah. That's the way I'm wired. Yeah. I don't care where it's stored, right? Yeah. But there's an aspect of how it's stored that allows it to be surfaced in some ways. Yeah. Where it can't, if you're, do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, I mean, so... Uh, what you just said is a big thing. A lot of people are like, I don't, I want to use my OneDrive and I don't want to use SharePoint because there's rules with SharePoint that I have to follow, yeah. right? And there is some truth to that. There is a compliance feature set that, and there's a governance feature set that Microsoft uh, has in spades, right? Like they do that better than most other competitors that they have. Uh, but at the same time, using it that way can can and will almost always be beneficial to the individual user. And 
actually at the core of what my concern and the thing that I'm frustrated with is if Microsoft spend more time making that scenario where I do put it in this organizational uh, uh, place and I make it great for the end user. I make it so amazing, so much better than any other per individual solution that I want to use. Everybody would use it. Like it would be the no brainer thing to do. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they more often than not focus on that individual tool as the starting point, And then the rest of it is kind of an afterthought. And so they break it up into these two things and they, they in some ways perpetuate the concept that there's it over here, which just want to, you know, pour water on everybody's, you know, fire of wanting to use the new cool thing. And there's users over here that only want cool, fancy things. They don't care about any of the compliance stuff. The truth of the matter is, Everybody, they both teams like want to work together. They just are struggling to find tools that will let them do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, I, I feel us easing into that conversation mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, really quick before we get too far, just to give people more examples of like uh, instances of how they might uncover, uncover this loop components you, yeah. you mentioned here. Yeah. How is that? So this gets a little bit into the launching, the way they get it. Loop components work in both organizational and individual. You can put it, so loop, loop components become a file effectively. That file can be stored in OneDrive. And today it can also be stored in Teams or in SharePoint and be leveraged. When they launched it, that wasn't the case. The way they, when they launched it, the first thing they did was say, you can use it in chat and email, and I'm gonna store it in your OneDrive. And there was a big splash and they did a big announcement and a lot of people knew about it, right? Mm -hmm. But when that announcement came out, like you, you told, you actually were like, hey, Matt, the loop's out, right? Yeah. And I went, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to recommend this to anyone. Mm -hmm. This is so terrible. It's just going to promote people putting files and data in their OneDrive, which will just be another nightmare for all of our customers. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to recommend it to anyone. And then silent, no marketing, they launched it in channels and SharePoint. No big splash, right? I yeah. remember seeing something, but it I mean, definitely I'm sure wasn't. it was in the admin center. I know it was in the admin yeah. center, but there wasn't a big thing, right? Yeah. And so then for me, what that creates is a scenario where I have a bunch of users that I have to be the bad guy poo-pooing on their brand new fancy thing. Yeah. Or I have to choose to do something wrong myself and then try to have to clean up the mess later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wish they would not do that. So that's an example of today, you can do either one. You can choose and it's fuzzy and, you know, whatever. And we can talk to people about what they should be doing. Do it in a channel. Don't use it in a chat unless you really have to, that kind of stuff. But when they launched it, I didn't have a choice. Microsoft handcuffed me. They ha the only thing I could say about it is I I probably wouldn't use it. Right. I wouldn't recommend it. And this is a consistent um, pattern that you're that we're seeing or have seen over the last yeah, few 100%. years um, of other things. So let's give a couple other examples. Um, let's take Teams. Uh, yeah. So in Teams, uh, they consistently launch stuff in chats and not in channels. So um, you know, being able to um, uh, pop out chats in channels. Can, uh, you got it in. in Chats, you didn't really get it until channels till later. Okay. Loop components, like I talked about, weren't available in chats or were available in chats, not in channels. Um, there's just all of this second class citizen kind of situation with mm -hmm. all of these tools that are the bread and butter of what Microsoft has done. Channel meetings, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. channel. Yes, exactly. Channel like meetings. Who uses a channel meeting? Because there's so many features that aren't mm -hmm. in a channel meeting that are in. Regular, oh, regular meetings. meeting, yeah. yeah. And then forms is another one that comes to mind because I know I have made the mistake of making individual forms a lot. And then it's really complicated or was um, to have to, yeah, add it to a team or- you used to not be able to- Yeah, you used to not this, be yeah. able to. So I had to, I had to copy it over, like I had to recreate it basically. Yeah. Forms I, is, I remember having to do that. Forms is a great example because they launched it and you could do both, right? Like they did what I, what I would want them to do. However, they promoted- individual forms. And why? so that was typically like, why where would people you promote, would... You want yeah. to promote people to do it in a in a group because if I'm creating this organizational knowledge where I'm going to capture all this data, I, I need to share it with other people. It's the organization's data. It's not my data. I'm not doing a survey of my employees as me as Matt. Mm -hmm. I, like I'm not the one doing it. It's, it's my position. It's my organization that's doing this. Yeah. And so they should be promoting... Like the edge case is Matt wants to send out a survey to ask some questions about how they feel mm -hmm. about something that he cares about, right? Like that's the edge case, right. not the primary case. And, and so then yeah. they did it. And then to compound the problem, they didn't have a way to move right. it from one to the other until like 
I don't know, a year ago? It was you, years, yeah. Like, yeah. it was not, it was just recently. And uh, as someone, I remember in that scenario, I was newer to using forms, so I just followed the intuitive way, which yeah. was to build the survey, build the form, I sent it out, and then one of you asked me, hey, have you gotten any responses on that? Can you send me over the information? And I realized, oh, you don't have access to this. Yeah. Like, oh, I wish that, I, that it would have been more intuitive for me to create this in a group where now I don't have to try to share every... It, it just made it actually a lot harder on me, too. So yeah. I hear you on the, the side of you want this level, this knowledge to sit at the level of the organization. But I'm also here to say it'll make your life easier, too. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. Because you don't have to jump through all the hoops then of getting it in the, the shareable that, spot. That's sort of what was just going through my mind is we have literally built a business on helping people navigate yeah. this structure. Like yeah. in a perfect world, we wouldn't need to exist right? because it was so It would it just be more intuitive. Because intuitive, right? Microsoft would be explaining this to their users in a way that makes sense to them. That's natural, right? Yeah. Like doing it the other way adds some extra steps. But like you said, if you could, if a, once a user under, like just un, for two seconds understands what it is, it's like, Oh, oh, of course I. Right. Yeah, that makes total sense. I, for sure, I mm -hmm. want to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a challenge for sure. Yeah, we've gotten to know some of the product people over the years, and all great people. Like yeah. in, on an individual level, like I uh, feel for them a little bit because they're trying to roll out new features, and they're like, "This seems like the fastest path to getting something in front of someone." And getting feedback. So they, yeah, and it's there is a a paradigm, like design thinking paradigm, which is, yes, please get that in front of people as soon as possible. But it creates that, that fork in the road that is really hard to get back to the other side. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the, uh, the thing that I would encourage them to think about if they're listening is um, your, these other tools, these tools that are individual in nature in the future really should be thought of as the secondary scenario, right? Mm -hmm. When you think about implementing a feature, that's the one that should be like, if that comes later, that's okay. Because at least I covered the one that most people are using, most people are doing. Now, I recognize that's not the reality of today, but the reason it's not a reality of today is, like I said before, you know, it's just they haven't done a good enough job at it yet. But the reality is if they don't solve that problem, Slack, whimsical, like uh, all of these bigger, you know, Google, all these things, they're going to get better at these things. They mm -hmm. have gotten better at these things and they'll beat you to the other piece of it, right? Because you're giving them an opportunity to beat you on both sides. You're giving them space to do that. Um, whereas if you would focus on it and make that like stellar, be like as good as like the everyone standard. else, the gold yeah. standard, yeah. nobody in the world would care that you don't, I can't do the same thing in OneDrive. Like right. it's not, it doesn't, or or that nobody would care that you can't do it for a month before you actually have it, right? right? Everybody right. would be like, this is so amazing. Everybody's going to love it. Everybody's going to love it. Yeah. It, uh, what comes to mind for me is like planner. Like, oh, yeah. man, yeah. if they could just nail down that like core feature set and avoid this like draw to these other tools that are yeah. knocking it out of the park. Where I have to tell someone, oh, it'll be better in the long run if you don't go do this. Yeah. The integration isn't as good. So stick with planner and then you got to fight through that pain. Mm -hmm. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. To, and we don't have a crystal ball. We don't see what the path of yeah. the roadmap of these things are. And so we're uh, taking a little bit of a guess, like a, an estimated guess, but uh, it's... Well, it's hard right now today, the warts are worth it. Right. Right. Like the benefits that you get from a compliance management, organizational data, organizational uh, uh, collaboration, et cetera, are worth the hoops and the, oh yeah, I know that doesn't quite work right. Oh yeah. I know that doesn't quite work right. Uh, eventually nickel. that won't yeah. be the case <laughs> and the other tools will be equally as good in my case for it will be different, right? Yeah. If you if they don't do anything, that's what will happen eventually. Um, on that side of it. You know, I just, you know, I've, we've given just to be transparent, we've given this feedback to Microsoft yeah. um, in, in our capacity that we can. It's not like we're heavily involved with all of the, uh, all of the, the teams, you know, you know, I would encourage you if you have an opportunity to have a conversation with Microsoft to encourage them 
and he, let them hear that as well. Um, they respond, do respond to users' feedback. That is something that they do, um, especially in a lot of like teams and loop. And these teams are looking for feedback from end users. They look for volume. Yes. Yeah. How right. much you're talking about it. Yep. And so one of the problems that we have with our voice is we're one of some of the only people talking about it in the way that we're talking about it. Many times people complain about a particular feature mm -hmm. that's going on. They don't like this one feature. They don't like that one feature. Mm -hmm. But they don't boil it down to the reason they don't like it is because of the way Microsoft is storing these things, organizing, and how they're focusing. If I, we can get more people talking to Microsoft about this particular problem, about the way that they're approaching these features, organization versus individual, I think we can start to see a change in how they behave. Um, and it's, and I think it'll be better for them. I think it'll be better for us. I think it'll be better for everyone involved.